you know, people often believe that leadership is something that falls from the sky. It is not. It's the product of a, a lot of effort, a lot of listening, a lot of hearing the other, a lot of understanding the other, in order to connect what you see as a vision moving forward with what your people and the people around you believe. And, and that it is hard work. Ebola is a disease that knows no mercy. But there are teams from around the globe who are on the move or on high alert to contain this current outbreak. My name is Susana Malcora. At the time of the Ebola outbreak, I was Chief of Staff of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon of the United Nations. And as such, he asked me to lead the response that we put together and to coordinate efforts among the many actors that were part of this response, which was a big challenge, but a great opportunity also. The Ebola epidemic continues to grow in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. It was August 2014. At that moment, the numbers estimated by the US Center for Disease Control were that by January, we were going to face one million cases of Ebola. The situation on the ground was a situation where people felt that there was no control. You know, this was a disease that was not clear at the beginning where it had come from. Then the traces show that it had a travel long distances from one country to the other. And it also show, and this is very significant, that the single most important point of contact for those transfers of the disease were funerals. Uh, people were scared, deeply scared, and didn't know how to protect themselves. When people felt ill and troubled to get uh, some kind of medical attention, whatever basic medical attention was available, the more they traveled, the more they spread the virus. So it, it was a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy that this was going to go into the millions as, as it originally estimated. So you got this notion of pressure because if you didn't do things right, this was going to multiply exponentially next week. Ebola poses a serious threat to international peace and security, and it will require an unprecedented plan to address the epidemic. That stark assessment comes from the United Nations Security Council. The resolution was co-sponsored by more than 130 countries in a show of solidarity and support for a coordinated effort. The Secretary General committed to support and requested me to design a proposal on how to move forward. Understanding how challenging this was going to be, we put together a team to create an innovative approach to address the problem. This became the first ever health mission in the United Nations history. Five priorities were defined, stopping the outbreak, treating the infected, ensuring essential services, providing stability, and preventing further outbreaks. I was absolutely taken by this challenge. You know, it was such a dramatic situation. The launching of the mission immediately after took place in Accra, Ghana where I hosted all relevant paid players, more than 50 for two days, to design a detailed action plan. This brought under a single tent with African governments, of course, and contributors like the US, France, and the UK, among others. The UN system at large, and of course, the NGO community. It was a massive effort to align the priorities with the work in the field. The idea of starting with a white piece of paper without any preconditions and being able to design something out of our pure creativity within the knowledge that we had of the system gave us a, an energy that was really amazing. Everything was very fast track. That gave us an empowerment to do things, to get things done. I hosted every week one meeting with all the players to make sure that we were uh, sitting at the same 
place and seeing things in, in the same way, or if not, to align our views. This once a week stock taking with all the actors was absolutely essential to the success of the mission. Well, when, when you have a, 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 such a number of actors and such important actors as, as we had, of course you will find different perspectives, you know, and, and the, the perfect is, is the enemy of the good. I, I deeply believe in that. So my view was we need to move forward. This plan was meant to be flexible and adaptable to the changing circumstances on the ground. An initial design have very centralized treatment facilities and that proved not to work and we had to decentralize on the go, changing the priorities of temporary construction of hospitals. This was a major departure from the initial design, but it was a critical step to the success of the mission. It also recognized the need to have a strong connection with local communities, given the cultural and religious sensitivities associated to some of the measures to bend the curve of growth as it was happening. For example, burial practices had to be dramatically changed in order to stop the change of the spread. And that meant affecting the deep roots of beliefs in those communities. Building local capacity was also a key driver of the mission. We decided that the strength deployed from outside had to leave behind a more resilient system. In my view, it is clear that the recent response to COVID seems to prove that West Africa has a strong surveillance mechanisms as a consequence of the lessons learned with Ebola. The World Health Organization is set to declare the Ebola outbreak in West Africa over on Thursday. Liberia, one of the three countries affected by the two and a half year crisis, has been free of new infections since early December. Guinea and Sierra Leone were also declared Ebola free. At the end, 11,300 people died. It is a very significant number, but very far from the initial estimations of 1 million. This is a proof, in my view, of the value of the UN system mobilizing behind a clear goal and with member states, from the General Assembly to the Security Council, supporting those efforts in a seamless manner. A great example of a global community working for the global good. Leadership in itself is the capacity to define a vision and to go beyond what the contours of what you do today are, of what the, the organization is today and bring it to a, a, the next level of development. Your capacity to envision something and to instill that vision and that energy in your teams, you need to be able to understand the other and empathy to me is, is, is a foundational element that should be considered as a leader. And that it is hard work. It's, you have to be dedicated day in and day out. In this current environment of ours, what you learn today is obsolete at the most in five years' time. So you need to be ready to be on a continuous learning path. The flexibility to accept that what you have been doing, what you have been preparing yourself so far, might not be a, what you need to do now and have this capacity to reinvent yourself, to challenge yourself, to seek new opportunities. Uh, the third thing I will say is be ready to fail. Because you only fail when you try. And trying and pushing the envelope and going beyond your, your comfort zone is to me a fundamental element of growing and outgrowing yourself. So be ready to fail, learn from failure and move ahead and, and really build on that to become stronger and better.